Now we will continue with the different diagnostic steps for liver disease and also the therapeutic strategies that are used to fight against this condition. Let's take a look. For the diagnosis of liver disease, clinicians follow primary and secondary steps. Primary steps include the personal medical history of the patient and general physical examinations. The secondary steps include blood tests, imaging and eventually liver biopsies. During the blood tests, specific parameters associated with liver function are monitored in the blood. The most common ones are two enzymes that are produced by the liver, which are called aspartate aminotransferase, AST, and alanine aminotransferase, ALT. Phew, I thought our names were complicated. Aza, Ali, and Azu. But now we are also talking about AST and ALT? Yes, Azu. The world of science and medicine is really full of abbreviations but these ones you also find on your results of a blood test and they tell you a lot about the health status of your organs. AST is found in a variety of tissues, including the liver, but also the brain, the pancreas, the heart, the kidneys, the lungs and skeletal muscles. If any of these tissues are damaged, AST will be released into the bloodstream. While high AST levels mean there might be a tissue injury. It doesn't always relate to the liver. By contrast, ALT is found mainly in the liver. Therefore, it is common to use the ratio between AST to LST for the diagnosis of liver disease. This is called the AST-ALT ratio or also called the Riches ratio. In healthy individuals, the ratio between AST and ALT is around 1. But why do they become elevated during liver disease? That is a good question. Elevations in serum ALT and AST often result from hepatocellular injury by damage of the cell membranes and release of the enzyme into the extracellular space. From the ratio between those two markers, a physician can assess whether only the liver is damaged or also other tissues. But can you be a doctor too and assess it too? Besides ALT and AST, there are also other proteins that are commonly checked in the blood for the diagnosis of liver disease. Um, some examples are gamma GT or the C-reactive protein or CRP. If the liver parameters in the bloodstream are not within the healthy ranges, the clinician may use specific imaging techniques. The abdominal ultrasound is the first line imaging test used to evaluate liver disease. Depending on the results, further examination would be recommended, such as a CT scan or an MRI. Ultrasound is a non-invasive technique that uses sound waves to visualize the liver, its blood vessels and associated structures for instance, the gallbladder. On ultrasound images, steatotic livers look brighter than normal livers, and cirrhotic livers look lumpy and shrunken. Ultrasound elastography is a special ultrasound technique to test for liver fibrosis. The movement of the liver caused by ultrasound waves is measured in the middle of the liver, and its elasticity or stiffness is then calculated. A computed tomography scan, CT or CAT scan, is a non-invasive diagnostic imaging procedure that uses a combination of special X-ray equipment and sophisticated computer technology to produce a cross-sectional image of the body. On a CT, steatotic livers look darker than normal livers and cirrhotic livers look again lumpy and shrunken. And lastly, MRI uses a magnetic field and radio waves to produce a detailed picture of the liver. MRI is the most sensitive imaging test for steatosis. It is highly accurate even in mild steatosis. Using MRI, a clinician can calculate the percentage of fat in the liver. 
When the blood test and also the imaging studies suggest that the patient has liver disease, the clinician usually recommend a liver biopsy. The biopsy helps to determine the exact severity of liver disease, and based on this, potential therapeutic strategies are then planned. Liver biopsy can be performed in different ways. However, the most common one is the percutaneous liver biopsy. It is carried out by sedating the patient and afterwards inserting a thin needle through the abdomen directly into the liver. And then a small piece of tissue is collected. So far, we talk about the different diagnostic methods for liver disease. And this is important because the treatment of the patient depends on the exact diagnosis. The treatment strategies for liver disease range from pharmacological intervention, lifestyle modifications, up to liver transplantations in case that the liver is damaged beyond the body capacity to regenerate. When it comes to medications, we have to say that there are currently no licensed therapies for NFLD or NASH, despite its prevalence and clinical significance. However, a wide diversity of medications exist, which are used to treat the side symptoms associated with liver disease and actually also with the metabolic syndrome. There are drugs available to help against liver fibrosis, also to decrease circulating lipid levels. In this case, a doctor might prescribe statins, for example. If glucose levels are high, insulin or metformin are often used as drugs. When we think of lifestyle modifications, we all know that it is beneficial to use certain diets and, of course, to move our body. I usually give the energy for exercise. I am therefore quite interested in what the exact effects of physical activity on our liver are. Tell us more about that. It is well known that when we exercise, our muscles secrete myokines, which are small proteins released by the skeletal muscles in response to contractions. Some of the myokines have an effect on the liver, such as myonectin, irisin, and FGF21. Once in the liver, these myokines have protective effects against NAFLD, such as enhancing insulin sensitivity, fat oxidation, and also reducing inflammation. Therefore, we can clearly see the positive and direct effects of physical activities in the liver. You have mentioned some pharmacological interventions and physical activity as therapeutic strategies to fight against liver disease. But can scientists also design pharmacological interventions that mimic physical activity? This is a very complex question because it has been reported that when we exercise, thousands of proteins get activated. Therefore, it would be very difficult to find one single compound that could mimic all of those. And so the suggestion would still be to include physical exercise in your daily routine and not just take a pill. So, what do we discuss in this video? In this video, we talk about the first and second diagnostic steps for liver disease, including blood tests, imaging, and eventually liver biopsies. Additionally, we also talk about the different therapeutic strategies for liver disease, which go from pharmacological interventions, lifestyle modifications, up to liver transplantation.